Hey guys, so uh, back to um, workflow cases. I feel like it's good to share, you know, the the, the whole process uh, from the beginning to an end. Uh, today, I'm working on a monolithic device. You know, it's a, it's an unusual, a traditional type of uh, shape to a flash drive. It looks like a, you know, hard plastic card, uh, like a credit card, business card, whatever. Um, good thing for marketing purposes I guess it's a monolithic flash drive so let me take you through the steps of uh, getting this um, inspected and uh, what I do when these cards or flash drives come in To test this, we're gonna set the multimeter to a diode test mode. Uh, one probe goes on the ground, another probe goes on the power. Uh, right here we see our connector, so uh, these two outside pins. If we hear a beep, uh, that means they're in short. If there is no beep, constant beep that is, uh, there is no short. So we have no short, we're good to proceed. This is a monitor for uh, current and voltage. It's connected to a USB cable which goes to the power supply unit. This is what I'm gonna use to see how much current this thing consumes. Usually if you can see how many amps it's taken in, it can give you a good idea of uh, what overall is happening with the device. So let's just go ahead and do that. I plug in the device. And power up. So we're getting uh, 50, 40 milliamps. That's a really good reading for a flash drive. Uh, we can then take it to uh, further testing equipment, which is going to be a DeepSpar USB stabilizer. This box I use for everything that is USB related uh, to test it out first, once I know there is no short. So we power on the device and now we wait. Anything is happening here? Huh. We get the device to show up, that's great, 14 gigs, uh, probably 16 gig flash drive. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our studio. Uh, usually that's what I would use for quickest browsing of the unit and scroll down. We see our device is mounted here uh, and I see it at the bottom right there. Okay, but the only thing I don't see is the partition. There's no partition showing uh, and that's a little worrying because um, we might be having some issues. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, open up the uh, hex view editor um, because as you can see other drives they do have partitions but this one isn't showing anything so we might have problem with uh, how this unit translates data so if we go into hex view and edit um, immediately I see uh, a pattern of uh, FF that's uh, but there is something wiped in the front, so I'm not too sure exactly what to make of it. But we see predominantly the unit shows up as blank. So what could it be? I mean, there are a few things we can try and do. Um, uh, uh, this is an extremely poor quality device, so um, most likely uh, the problem is with the NAND. And if the problem is related to the NAND, um, it's uh, gonna need NAND protocol access. Uh, especially on the monolithic device, our hands are really, really, really tight to what can be done. So you see this uh, circuit on the back of it, PC3000 database for flash. We can find a number of different schematics. It's extremely helpful and useful to uh, uh, obtain them if you don't have them. Sites like this help a lot. And if we have a schematic, we can uh, then uh, take it to the next step. We're going to need a breakout adapter. I'm going to use multi recovery adapter today. And uh, the beauty of this adapter is that it can be used on all platforms for uh, NAND protocol work. You can use it with uh, PC3000, VNR, and you can use it with FE as well. So um, to eliminate the amount of these tiny bristles that uh, will come off uh, from my tool that I use for stripping the back coat, uh, I put them in a little basket container. That basket container is actually from another flash drive. And um, uh, this uh, fiberglass scratch pen is what I'm gonna use to scuff up uh, the device with. Now, one more step. Uh, just because my uh, working mat is made out of silicone 
uh, those bristles can get in there and it will be hard to get them out I put a piece of paper underneath it uh, when I scratch it with this pen it throws these bristles all over the place sometimes they can go outside of the basket as well this will just kind of help me catch them so they don't spread all across my work area and then stab me when I least expect it so um, slide the tip out a little bit and just basically start scratching the surface away uh, this is what the surface looks like and scratching it eventually will expose the copper uh, traces that we will need to establish the connection with once we're done just gonna apply a little bit of alcohol first it's gonna help release the glue and uh, also wet some of these bristles so that they don't spread around. It's also a good idea when you do that, if you do that, uh, to have your uh, uh, air intake exhaust, I should say, uh, turned on uh, so that you don't breathe any of that stuff. Some of those particles can be, get airborne. Just a quick wipe down, I saw a few bristles that got away from me. So I'm gonna tape the device to the adapter uh, and we need to tin all of the contacts that we're going to be uh, making connections with a lot of them are on this side a little bit here uh, a little bit in this corner as well so i'm going to put some more here i find that uh, you don't need to put a lot of flux on it uh, the iron i'm using it's a very very uh, good quality iron it makes uh, soldering a breeze when it comes down to these things and on the left hand side we see all the signals that we're going to be linking up so they're going to need to be pretend as well so this is an adapter I haven't used for NAND protocol breakout yet so apply a little bit of tin on all of these pads that will just make uh, the work later on a lot more easier and quicker so just add a little bit on every one of them and we'll be good to go on top we have a connector since our device is still functional functional somewhat um, it's very useful to have uh, access to a four pin of the connector and make that manual connection on top as well um, because if we want to test something in the future we can just easily plug this uh, breakout adapter through a USB cable into a USB port and our device will work uh, just like it did um, when before we took it out I'm gonna tin this area and to tin it I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, solder here and there we don't need to um, you know have like this uh, little solder half a sphere to uh, to make contact been kind of uh, using very very light attachments lately and um, uh, it's a lot it's a lot easier to control a lot faster to uh, to link up and uh, the wire I'm using is 42 gauge today and it's isolated obviously for this kind of work you will definitely want isolated wire a lot of you ask me where I got this wire I got it on eBay uh, you can buy them in big rolls there's no specific link but just go into uh, eBay and type in enameled uh, copper wire you're gonna see a bunch of them different uh, different spec different widths sizes etc so there is first contact this is uh, IO0 and uh, we link it up now we just pull it off and that's done and we're gonna do that for every other one of them moving forward IO1 IO2 and so on and so forth if you guys have any questions let me know um, in the comments below uh, if you just experienced a problem with a flash drive that isn't uh, uh, showing what it had on there before if it stopped working or whatnot also check the link in the description all our contact details are there guys
looks a little blurry um, in the camera view but uh, when I work I work through the uh, uh, microscope glass obviously and um, the depth of field uh, that the camera uh, gets versus what uh, the eyepieces have uh, it's definitely uh, definitely different league uh, like what the things that are out of focus in the uh, in the screen right now they're extremely sharp in my scope uh, same goes for the lightning the light and the, the way that camera catches that light uh, doesn't really uh, go to show exactly how things look when I work with them and how they are in a microscope so it's just technology stuff guys uh, I mean I work in front of the window and uh, the sunlight also uh, affects how everything is so um, adjusting the light is very very hard when you're in closed area and there's uh, light that you can always control and it's always the same and you have no daylight in the room it's obviously easier to set it up to make it look uh, static and perfect but <laughs> one day we have clouds one day we have full sun and uh, I mean I can just hit the record button guys so I've tested the unit out everything looks good this adapter uh, is for multi-board multi-board adapter gets clinked to this middleman uh, adapter from uh, multi recovery and then uh, the breakout board goes in there uh, start up the task and what we want to do is uh, read the content of the NAND chip. Uh, if uh, this device has problems with translation, it will display some data um, in the bit view. But if this unit, let's see, we get ID, excellent. We can start working with it. That means our wiring most likely is good. And um, we can begin the extraction of the uh, NAND uh, content. So go in here and select, uh, read chip I'm gonna try direct first that's gonna give us uh, live access to the device um, expand the chip go into uh, page designer and the page designer we're gonna select bit view this can get laggy um, especially with devices that read but I can see there is data in there so we can go ahead and start reading it um, gonna clear out what we've uh, browsed through so far and just go read chip uh, now we're gonna read it into a dump file just gonna select all the default settings and uh, let it run its course. It says just slightly over an hour. So once it's done, we come back to it. We've read the chip. There is a problem. What is the problem you may ask? Let me explain. So uh, the dump is right here. If we go into page designer and the bit view, this will give us um, a view of what's on the device. Solid color means it's a pattern repeating same stuff ff that's how it looks when we get to this this is what the data looks like it looks like random uh you know letters numbers all kinds of stuff so the noise uh when it looks like this is representative of the content that's on the flash drive so the flash drive that is full will have this across the majority of it the flash drive that is empty uh, that's filled with blank pattern will have a solid color on it um, so when we scroll and this is on the on the on the block level this is not interface this is not controller telling us that that's what's on there and this is what is inside of the NAND so unfortunately this here is all blanked out Do you guys remember in the beginning of the video when we try to access it with our studio we couldn't see any partitions well, here's what I came to find out after. I was like, okay, so if this is blank, if this is blank, then why do we have, why do we have this? What is this? And because if this was blank due to a failure of the translator or the NAND, we would not get any of this. Everything would be blank, but we have something. So I took it off the adapter. I put it back in the deep spar. As you can see, it's connected and it's being scanned. It's, it's scanning right now. Uh, it's going running at 13 megabytes per second and I have our studio running at the same time and this is what we are looking at so I'm just gonna close this up for now the scan came up with something the scan found X fat partition if you look at the boot sector of this it clearly is X fat but there's nothing there it's entirely empty 
and what can we do with it i'm not sure because it's the, the, the content isn't isn't there i scanned it and almost entirely it doesn't find anything so um however when we go to explore it we can see that this has been created in 2016 so this is a really 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 old um, device and this is the file that they wanted this is probably the only thing that's that was meaningful on this unit um, but because it's been deleted and something went on top of it this file is no longer accessible this file guys is 6.7 gigs on a 16 gig device it should take almost half of the device up uh, we'll definitely see a presence of this thing but if we don't it's no longer there so this just confirms that the file that they wanted no longer exists and uh, there is really no alternative way of obtaining it uh, not every case uh, is unfortunate as this obviously but this is one of those that cannot be solved and there is really no problem with the device this could have been done with our studio within 15 minutes um, without even having any special tools or anything like that but um, we didn't have all the details this came from another data recovery shop that sent it to us and um, this is what it is unfortunately we won't be able to restore it but maybe um, in the future you know we'll ask more questions about uh, this kind of stuff when there's strange behavior and in the future I'll be looking closer towards finding out if there are any uh, additional patterns or anything that I see before we wire it up to an end protocol I I honestly thought that the translator was down and that's why the card appeared blank but as you can see it's not it's not a case here it's definitely not a case here and um, uh, overriding and formatting based on the timestamps that I see here is definitely what killed the content thank you guys for sticking around if you have a flash drive or memory card that needs recovery hit us up link in the description if you have any comments suggestions or anything you want to share please do so in the comments below and i'll see you all in the next episode